Hi, this is Lee, and this is a video of me painting God Miniature from the uh, Marvel Zombies board game by Simon Games. Uh, the video is about 32 minutes long, and then the first 20 minutes uh, is about me talking about the process and then the whole process of me painting this miniature. Uh, the second part, which is from 20 minutes to 32 minutes, that's the uh, the other pose of God, and then it's the shield guy, uh, it's the process of me painting the shield. Uh, so those are speed painted. Each one of them took me about 10 minutes or so. Uh, ideally, you should be able to finish one of those uh, in, in 10 minutes um, by using this method, obviously. Uh, but the, the video is not 10 minutes long because there are me talking and then uh, I slow the process as a showcase and then there's also me talking so I talk a lot I talk a lot in this video anyway there are seven of those uh, miniatures in the game and then there are two poses that's 14 uh, shield agents or with with, with, with actual uh, heavy arm and uh, shield as well those are essentially uh, fetties in traditional zombie side board game uh, because in Marvel Zombies you're playing infected superheroes, so zombies, and then against not infected superheroes and shield agents. So uh, those are essentially the, the zombies you meet in the traditional zombie side. Um, anyway, the method only works on those gods miniature because uh, the way it's sculpted, the way the details they had, uh, the, the multiple layer of armor just has the, the 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 bump of the details by itself already uh it does not really work on the other like tech guys or just stand up uh, shield soldiers uh, because they are wearing like a, a suit and then they're more dynamic you can't really dry brush all the lot of details from it but those those are are fine so if you are wanting to get a sweet paint on those uh mainly just dry brush mainly just dry brush uh, but the other ones, I haven't figured out a, a better way, a more efficient way to paint the uh, tech guys and the standard shield soldiers. But uh, ah, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, I primed the miniature in black. Uh, I should probably using dry brush first, but I, I, I did actually paint the base first, which was not idea because if you paint the base first and then you apply the dry brush, the dry brush will affect the, the you, will, you will see a lot of small dots, small dots on the base as well because the, the way dry brush works is essentially apply small particles of the paints to the uh, miniature and then it will just splash onto those uh, areas underneath the miniature as well so it will affect the base. So ideally you should use dry brush first and then apply the color of the base uh, secondly but uh, in this video I uh, I paint the base first because there's also like a wait time just to get the paints dry so just to saving time I applied the uh, Morphin Brown on the base first um, if you want a if you want a large area to get covered with paints like quickly uh, Add a little bit more water in the brush so they, they, they can spread like faster <coughs> um, and also that that thins the paints a lot if you want like multiple layers on top uh, for dry brush uh, any dry brush will do um, I was using just a standard a flat dry brush if you have a fancy dry brush like a proper dry brush dry brush from either artist ops or other brands uh, they should work probably even better uh, when you're doing the apply the dry brush, try to follow one direction, uh, or at least uh, in a similar direction. Don't just dry brush from the left to right and then from the right to left again. Try to follow one direction uh, at least for uh, one part of it, and then uh, focus more on the areas you want the uh, you want the you want the highlights to hit so for the front bit the left leg the left uh, shoulder are the main uh, areas I hit so they are brighter than the rest of the area and then for the back side 
uh, it'll be the uh, right leg because uh, the, the posing is the guy is stepping on the left leg and then the left the right leg will hit by the uh, backlight so that that, that will uh, be brighter because of the back li backside lighting um, as you can see yeah so that's the uh, blue lighting effects I will apply at the very end uh, and then just some kind of random dry brushing to adding a little bit more randomness of the uh, of this highlights uh it, it basically works as a ha uh, each highlighting for every single small pieces of the armor um oh the paints i use here all from games workshop uh the mainly just base paints so the it was abandoned black it was either corox white or ceramite white i can't remember which one because i have both and then i sometimes just use either one of them uh, and then the blue was markridge blue the uh, this uh, dusty color is Zendri dust. Uh, they're all base paints. The uh, cyanish blue color I will be using uh, was the uh, Temple God blue. That's layer paints. So there's no like uh, contrast or shades or wash or any like speed paints color uh, paints used in this video. Um, this is just to uh, the current process is just to bump out all those details on the base. So Marvel Zombies, uh, the sport game has every single miniatures a sculpted base, which is very nice. Uh, it set up a small drama by itself already, and then there are a lot of details on the base. So for this god, it's, it's just uh, on, on, I don't know, random road or straight, and then you can see a lot of small. Uh, Shredded rocks, and then one piece of paper in front, the other piece of paper at the back, and then there is this coke cup with a straw still inside, being uh, squished, crashed on the floor there. Uh, there are a lot of details, uh, but if you uh, like apply a lot of paints on directly on top of it, you do have to enhance all those structures again. I'm using uh, abandoned black just to outline all the small details, uh, which is fairly easy because the miniature is is detailed enough just to have you trace through all those uh, all those structures. Um, I think I was running out of white, and then just a little bit more white, uh, adding another layer of highlights to enhance the structure. So the the paper. At the front is uh, folded and then outlining the uh, edge highlighting and then just stepping on some rocks again or uh, not entirely sure what I'm talking here but I assume it will be just some random talk for the process um, you can you can probably finish directly here if you in, in, if you are satisfied with this result, uh, this took me what, about five minutes to be honest. But if you want more color than just black and white, you can apply some uh, blue for the armor. Uh, keep the uh, brush like uh, wet enough, so it's more like a, 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 a a glazing rather than paint over it. You don't want the paint to be too thick at the at this point because you want all the dry brush work still visible, even with this uh, thin layer of paints on. Um, so you don't have to paint like every single part of this uh, character's armor. Uh, I don't feel it's necessary. You do want this uh, some light blue, some dark blacks variants so the only areas I apply the blue are the shoulder pads and then the uh, armor on the legs the uh, chest armor the helmet and uh, I think that I think that's all the parts I hit with blue uh, a, a light blue you don't you don't want again you don't want this uh, the, the color be too much you you still want this uh, Edge highlighting be visible, and then obviously if you paint like 
too much, you still want like enhance the edge lighting. You can you can also uh, revisit those areas just to exaggerate the uh, highlighting again. And then there are a few parts that your dry brush may or may not hit. You can also manually highlight those as well. So for example, the structure on the uh, lower part of the arm or on the uh, the, the, the back side of it. Anywhere that your dry brush didn't really hit, you still want the height to be highlighted. You can highlight them right now. Uh, and then there's also like few armors right underneath the chest armor. Also, this this like big plate uh, here, um, and then because you want some uh, like strong highlighting on it as well, so you can uh, just draw some straight lines and then sideways follow the same direction. Um, if you want all the highlights from the right to left, do it for every single of them. Uh, don't don't put don't put like a, a left to right highlights on one of the pieces and put down right to left on the other pieces that all makes it a bit weird um, so essentially just trying to put some highlights on, on those parts you still treat those whole pieces in one huge chunk of metal to apply those highlights uh, mainly on flat surface so you don't want to put those highlights uh, onto those uh, rounded like knee armor or uh, or like shoulder bed, you don't really want that. You want those highlights on only the uh, huge flat surface. And then uh, on the back side, there's a uh, uh, blue uh, back lighting effects. Uh, you can start to apply some of the parts like here straight away. So basically uh, the back side of the left, uh, right leg, and then also this side plate on the uh, uh, on the side as well, and then there's a, a big chunk of armor uh, right at the back. Um, potentially the the lower parts of the uh, uh, armor on the uh, right 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 arm, and then just more edge highlighting, just more like just those kind of straight highlights to exaggerate the. Uh, the, the highlights, the, the material of the the miniature, uh, not, not the material of the miniature, but the material of the, the armor. <coughs> um, anyway, just to add some extra information on those miniatures. Um, then for this part, this is like a three metal plate on top of the shoulder armor. Um, just paint one straight uh, line from the top to the bottom and then they'll create some kind of uh, nice highlights for those kind of rounded metal um, and then again just some edge highlighting to enhance the, the uh, structure of the armor and then to add in a little bit of randomness of the highlights and then more uh, blue color applied to this uh, back lighting and then Enhance the uh, highlights on the fingers to exaggerate the uh, structure of the, the hands. And then more highlights on the metal parts here on the knee. Uh, for the glasses, uh, I used Tamagot Blue. To cover the whole part of it, uh, and then just trying to smooth out the paint, and then wait for it to get dry. Obviously, um, I think I'm going to add another layer of the highlights on the floor. So here to enhance the uh, texture on the on the base, just use some stepping. Just to step some Zentry dust plus some white, just another extra layer of highlights to make the uh, ground uh, see less boring. Because if you want just one layer of dark 
brown, it will become just boring and then you don't want just a few of the rogues pops out. You want the whole floor has some kind of texture, kind of, uh, you know, uh, zombie apocalypse feel, kind of dusty, kind of, you know, crap, shabby-ish like. And then obviously, don't don't forget to enhance the uh, paper and those small pieces of rocks. Uh, again, because uh, you still want those details to bounce out. Anyway, just some random snapping work and then trying to add in more color variance onto the, the, the brownness of the base. Um, I think by the time you finish this, the, the paints on the glasses will be ready, will be dry, and then just apply a few lines. Follow one direction, follow this, uh, better follow the same direction that you applied for the highlights. So if it was from the left to right, you follow the same direction, follow the same angle even on the uh, glasses as well. Just few lines, uh, ideally two or three, uh, with different thickness. You may want one of the highlights line a bit thick, and then the other one right next to the very thing, and then another one on the other side. After you've done that, you still uh, enhance the uh, shadows. Um, uh, maybe that's too much. I think I, uh, yeah, maybe maybe that's that's too much. Um, I think I put the abandoned black directly for the shadows on the, down the glasses. You may want a just a darker blue or uh, some blue like darker than the uh, temple god blue, and then you still trace the uh, the the side of the glasses because you don't want the paints, uh, you don't want the highlights over on the side of uh, over on the frame of the glasses. Uh, those highlights are will only be applied on the actual glasses, glasses, not the frame of the glasses. And then just again a few extra ish highlighting to bump up the structure on the back side. And uh, I think the last step will be just using some dry brush. Well this is not the last step, the step before last step. Uh, use some dry brush, add a bit of zendry dust, dry brush a little bit on the uh, front of the base because the back of the base will be applied for the blue lighting effect. So uh, apply a dry brush on the front bit and then to even out some uh, texture and then you enhance the uh, structure of the details on the floor again by giving a uh, just abandoned black or tree through all those details to exaggerate the value of those uh, details and then make them more visible um, to trace through all those uh, small rocks or the, uh, the the cracks on the floor and then the side of the, the, the paper um, and then maybe maybe some extra highlighting just on the few details at the front maybe the small rocks piece of paper the folded part of it some small parts you, you, uh, it's not necessary for the base but if you want all those small details still be visible you should highlight them again um, that's pretty much it the final step will be using dry brush to apply the uh, temple blue from the side uh, you again dry brush apply to uh, those highlighted area already and then the base because you want the uh, colors uh, be spreaded from this one angle to all the parts you uh, previously highlighted. So from the side, uh, well when you're using dry brush you can either use the specific dry brush paints Alternatively, just any brush. Just make sure you try the brush out on either your skin or your nails first to make sure it's not too much water in the brush. Make sure it's dry brush, dry brush, not wet brush. And then maybe you want to add some extra highlights on 
the, 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 uh, the bottom bit of the arm and then there are a few areas you may miss through the dry brush uh, some loose ends we won't fix that but uh, this is more or less the whole process of me painting this guard uh, this this uh, guard measure uh, shield agents um, random dry brush trying to spread all the blue lighting effects on the whole back side of them even a little bit of the front to to have you uh, to have this miniature be visible at the front as well and then there is a backside lighting of it so that's more or less it uh, you also you may want to uh, paint through the the uh, side of the base as well to, if you want a clean black side of it uh, all right moving on to the shelf guys so they, they're using the uh, pretty much same processing technique because this one has the actual shell to paint which which largely increased the the time you would spend on this miniature so it's just uh, annoying but uh, for the main body part uh, still using the same technique same dry brush process same uh, color uh, same uh, highlights but for the shield uh, I paint the shield in mainly white um, but because it's like a really big flat surface, so you want some mm, nice textures on it rather than just a flat uh, color. Uh, so I left a lot of brush strokes on those, uh, specifically just for this shell, obviously. Um, so when I paint the shell, I try to keep all the brush strokes on it to add in to add to add well texture to the shield um, so I edge highlighting it first and then uh, apply the I, I don't think I apply the pure white I think I add a little bit of time God blue to still have the shield a little bit color so when you paint the shield you want the color you want your brush from the top to bottom and then to have them in a straight uh, perpendicular line on it and then uh, you can use side of the brush but uh, for, for the first few layers only eventually you'll still use the tip of the brush to to create brush strokes to create this texture on the shield um, then because the shield is kind of curved you you want uh, some highlights some shadows uh, on the shield as well so you want uh, maybe less bright on the very left side and then very bright um, just next to it and then some darker area and then bright again you may want uh, the colors variants in that specific way uh, and then just keep applying the brush strokes on, on it and then layer by layer you will get a, a uh, let's see a, a okay result of the shield uh, the the the, the, huh, the shield pattern the eagle pattern on the shield is pretty uh, nice sculpted uh, it's pretty detailed uh, you can just apply some uh, zendry dust to it. I used to uh, I was uh, using the uh, Everland sunset but seeing that yellow is a bit too bright for this logo so uh, then use Zendry Dust, which I think is fine for it. Again, just keep applying uh, the white from, well, either from top to bottom or just from middle of it. But you, you keep all the brushwork trying to connect them together from top to bottom. Um, so there are brighter parts, there are darker parts. Uh, trying to not keep the whole shield in one tone. Uh, you put the light, the shadow, the light, the shadow, you put them uh, in, in different orders, uh, but you still keep the light, keep the keep the light, highlights bit, keep the shadow bit. Uh, and then just trying to keep all your brush strokes. Uh, 
The whole show took me about 10 minutes, I'd say. Maybe less if you have a, a, a larger brush. I think I should use, probably use a larger brush. I think I was using a size 1 or maybe 0 even. I was using a size 0. It, it, it'll be probably easier if you're using size 2, size 3 even. To apply like colors on those, those kind of large flat surface. Uh, but again, trying to keep... Uh, the highlights and the shadows all together on the shelf so following shadow area highlights area shadow area highlights area or shadow area highlights area highlights area shadow area uh, which the, the order doesn't really matter but you want you definitely want both highlights and shadows all on the shelf as well it's it is flat surface but it is also curved and you do want to show more details on the shell rather than just a fat plain color of uh, either white or whatever the color you were trying to apply and again when you're applying this make sure the uh, the brush strokes are connected because there's a logo right in between you should not let that to separate the whole uh, shell you, sh you should you should uh, bypass the 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 uh, logo still let your brush going through the logo and then make sure that the, the shield looks like in one piece um, then again just more edge highlighting um, there is like a small window just on top of the uh, shield logo um, and also the top parts on top of the window is a separate piece a separate color piece so here i used uh, just some light gray to create highlights uh this part is fine to not following the all the highlights uh, order of the rest of shell because it's a different material it's a different part of it which is fine um, Then again, the uh, window part is gonna be a different material on the shield as well. So the highlights of the window can, you know, it doesn't have to be the same order as the rest of the shield as well. Um, but essentially, you're just try, trying to keep all the brush strokes you're using and then trying to create this um, clean uh, highlights and uh, shadows contrast on the shield. And then each highlighting to seal the whole color area. Mm. Boring, tedious work to be honest. It's trying to repeat uh, applying brush strokes. Uh, again, each highlighting to seal the whole area. Uh, moving on to the small windows on the shield, uh, just using Tempogar Blue, which will be fine. And then trying to make it clean, you don't want the paints go over to the areas that it shouldn't be. Uh, and then for the logo, just some blendery dust. You side up the brush. To avoid overpaints to, to, to the areas that shouldn't be. Uh, While well, just waiting for the window to get dried, and then you can also apply a, a, a another layer of highlight just on the side of. Uh, well, the, the highlights follows. So for this case, the highlights was on the left side of shield. So I tend to make the left side of the logo also brighter. And then apply the uh, environment lighting because the environment lighting is going to hit the shield as well. And then also to give a... It may not be a correct lighting setup, but it does add a little bit information on the shield rather than just pure black and white highlights you also add another layer of color on, on the shell which will make the shell looks 
less boring. Uh, again, for the highlights of the window, just apply some thin white lines will do. Um, keep the lines straight, keep the lines just in the window area, do not let the paints get to the area it shouldn't belong. Um, and then seal the whole thing with either edge highlight. I don't think I edge highlight the glasses here. I think I just uh, applied another layer of abandoned black to frame this whole small window thing. <coughs> but yeah, this is more or less the uh, process of the shield. So uh, the regular shield took me about 10 minutes. The shield guy took me 10 minutes plus the shield. <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, in fact, I don't think I don't think the, the, the main body took me ten minutes. But anyway, uh, if you want to paint the shell like uh, in a uh, 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 nice and then a way that contains like more than just flat colors, uh, this is one of the methods you can you can try to achieve. This is one of the effects you can try to achieve, uh, leaving enough brush stroke and then some highlights, some shadows on it. Again, the final step is still using a dry brush to apply the uh, environment lighting, the, using Temple God Blue to hit the areas that you want the, the, the lighting to hit. Again, it may not be the correct lighting setup. Uh, you, can, you can achieve the, a better lighting effect with airbrush, but for dry brush, this is uh, most likely what you can achieve and also uh, side of the shell I think I dry brush a lot on the uh, what is it? left right 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 side of the shell this, this, this part this part <clears throat> so when you look at the front front you'll see the blue lights are leaking through the back and then applying to the uh, bottom of the shield All right, yep, that's the whole process. Right, that's the squat. That's the final pieces look like. They are, they may not be like exactly the same, but they are more or less on the same painted level you can still see the back side of the helmet is not really painted uh, other than the primer obviously and you can see some of the uh, highlights are not like very nicely like perfectly applied but they are more or less the same quality uh, the shield wise you can see the two shells are not the same. Some of them may have, like, maybe different. Maybe some paint just spat over to the areas they shouldn't be. They are, each one of them are different yet similar. Uh, I did not paint the back side of the shell. I feel that's. Or less necessary and you ain't gonna see it like anyway so may not just leave it black let's see shell difference between shells hmm. this is even like there is a weird Plastic is screwed here. Uh, it's because it's a mood line. This is where the mood line hits. They're different, yet similar. So that's well, 14 agents of the shield. All right, thank you for watching, and uh, again, I'll have more Marvel Zombies videos uploaded soon. Uh, I think I should be able to finish the whole core game uh, painted in 
next month before next month hopefully uh anyway when i finish the all when i finish them all i'll have another video uploaded just to make a unboxing video of fully painted marvel zombies uh all right hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next one